In the previous video, we discussed how to compute the Schmidt decomposition of a pure bipartite state by using the concept of the singular value decomposition. So what we did was we represented our state in a standard basis, like the computational basis, and we used the complex coefficients to construct a matrix to which we applied the SVD to extract our Schmidt coefficients and our Schmidt vectors. So what I want to do in this video is now discuss the relationship that this Schmidt vectors and uh, Schmidt coefficients have with respect to the reduced density matrices of the two subsystems that compose our state zeta in this case. So basically our rho sub a and our rho sub b. And then once we have established that relationship, what we will be able to see is that if we have a state and we can extract its reduced density matrices, we can go back and from these calculate the Schmidt decomposition. So let's take a look at that by first remembering that to compute the density matrix of a pure state, all we have to do is take the outer product of the state with itself. And uh, here I'm, I'm omitting the uh, subscript AB just uh, to make things a little bit easier to write. So to compute the reduced density matrix of, for example, subsystem A, what we do is we perform the partial trace over subsystem B of our state rho AB or our matrix rho AB, right? And if you don't remember how to compute the partial trace, I have a link in the description below to a video where we go, go into detail on how to do this. So if we take now again this trace over B and we replace our density matrix with our state. So let's take our state in its Schmidt decomposition, right? So this is, this is the ket part of our state. And then we need to compute the outer product of that state with itself. So what we'll do here is we'll just copy the same state, but here we're going to change our kets for bras, right? So that gives us the bra version of this state. And we also need to take the complex conjugate of our lambda sub case. And since we need to perform the outer product for each of the elements, um, in this summation, then we actually need to replace our subscript here on the second part from, let's say from K to L, so that we are performing the outer product of each of the elements between these two summations, right? Now, we can reorganize this a little bit and just write the trace over subsystem B of our lambdas, which I just moved around because these are constant numbers, and then the outer product of our u sub k's and our u sub l's, because we perform the outer product in the same space of these two systems, right? And then tensored with the outer product of our v sub k's and our, our v sub l's. Now, here what we can do is since we have this now separated by terms in uh, the space of subsystem A and the space of subsystem B, we can just use the definition of the partial trace, which is basically applying the trace on subsystem B to just write down the trace over our components in subsystem B. Now, one of the properties that we discussed in a previous video is that the trace of the other product of two states is equivalent to the inner product of the transpose conjugate of these states. So this is just equivalent to the inner product of our V sub L's and our V sub K's. And since these two are orthonormal states, we can also just remember that for orthonormal states, this inner product is, is equal to one if L is equal to K and is equal to zero otherwise, right? So then, now this allows us to just reduce these two summations to a single summation because whenever k is different than l, we get zero. And whenever k is equal to l, we get a one there. So we just now have summation from k equal to zero to d minus one of, well, what is the 
um, product of lambda sub k with lambda sub k complex conjugate? Well, that's just a norm square of lambda sub k, right? Now, if you recall, this lambda sub k's are actually real numbers greater or equal than zero. So we really don't need to take the, the norm here. Uh, we're not multiplying really complex numbers, just real numbers. So this is equal just to the square of lambda sub k. And then we just get the outer product of u sub k with itself, okay? So this is the reduced density matrix of subsystem A when we use the Schmidt decomposition to compute it. And the great thing about this representation of this matrix is that this is its spectral decomposition. So basically, our eigenvalues for our rho sub A are given by this lambda sub k squares, and the eigenvectors are this u sub k's. So what this is telling us is that if we have rho sub A not necessarily represented in this form, we can compute its spectral decomposition to get its eigenvectors and its eigenvalues, and then we will have the Schmidt vectors of subsystem A and the Schmidt coefficients, because this will be given by the square root of the eigenvalues of the spectral decomposition of rho sub A. And then if we need our v sub case, well, we can do the exact same thing for rho sub B, right? We just uh, calculate the reduced density matrix of rho sub B, and then we're going to get this spectral decomposition. So we get the same lambda sub case, but now our eigenvectors are our v sub case. So one question you might ask is, the space of A and the space of B might not be of equal size, so how can we get the exact same spectral decomposition? So what happens is that if, let's assume, you know, M, the size of B is larger than the size of A, what's going to happen is that we're going to get a D, so our D is the number of uh, Schmidt coefficients, is going to be equal to, to this N, and then all the other terms, so basically all the M minus N terms, remaining for subsystem B are just going to be equal to zero. So all those lambda sub k's are going to be equal to zero when we perform the spectral decomposition for rho sub B. So basically to recap, an alternative way to compute the Schmidt decomposition, uh, other than using the SVD method that we described in the previous video, is by first we compute the density matrix of the overall system, then we calculate the reduced density matrices for A and B by using the partial trace over B and the partial trace over A. And then we calculate the spectral decomposition. So basically we find the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues for rho sub A and rho sub B. And then their eigenvalues are gonna be the lambda sub case squared. So the eigenvalues are our Schmidt coefficients squared or in other words, our Schmidt coefficients are the square root of the eigenvalues of our spectral decomposition. And then the eigenvectors of rho sub A are our u sub k's, and our eigenvectors of rho sub B are our v sub k's. And then lastly, all we need to do is just to construct our state zeta a b by associating the u sub k's and the v sub k's that share the same lambda sub k or the same lambda sub k squared when we perform the spectral decomposition and find those eigenvalues for rho sub a and rho sub b. So to make this process a little bit more clear, let's take a look at our example where we're gonna use the same state we've been working with in previous videos to use this new way of constructing the Schmidt decomposition by using the reduced density matrices of the two subsystems. So uh, in, in the previous uh, video, we, we worked with this example of the uh, W state where we associated this first qubit to the left with subsystem A and the second two qubits with subsystem B. And we performed the Schmidt decomposition first by inspection. Uh, and, and we got the, the following state where our lambda sub zero was this uh, square root of two over three. 
Are u sub zero is state zero? Are v sub zero is this equal superposition state of zero one and one zero? Are lambda one is uh, square root of one over three? u1 is state 1 and v1 is state 0, 0, right? And uh, we did this also using Python. So let's just go back to what we looked into before where, you know, we constructed uh, this w state here and we looked at the, um, the vector and its column form. Then we constructed our C matrix, which is the one to which we're going to apply the SVD next to extract our U matrix, our uh, V transpose, and then the diagonal elements of the Sigma matrix. So if you recall, we had the um, U matrix that had the state zero for our U zero and uh, state one for our U one. Then our V matrix, we ha which had the equal superposition state of zero one and one zero and then state zero, zero, and then our um, Schmidt coefficients of lambda zero equal to the square root of two over three and the square root of one over three. And uh, so now let's take a look at how to perform this exact same decomposition by using the reduced density matrices of our overall state. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import uh, from Qiskit, uh, this density matrix class and the partial trace function. So this will make our lives a little bit easier when computing all these different uh, elements. So we don't have to do this by hand, right? So we can basically uh, get our matrix row AB by just passing to this density matrix class, our state uh, W. And then let's display that here. And here we can see that's the density matrix for the, this W state that we have above, right? Now, if you remember the procedure, what we're going to do is first, we're going to compute the reduced density matrices row A and row B. So to do that, all we need to do is just, let's assign to row A, the partial trace of row AB. And here we're going to pass the the system we're going to tra trace out. So if you recall, subsystem B, where the two qubits to the right of the ket representation. So in Qiskit, uh, qubits are ordered in um, little endian notation. So this is qubit zero, this is qubit one, and this is qubit two. So to trace out system B, we need to trace out qubits one and zero. So here we pass a list with those two qubits. And then here we can see that the reduced density matrix for subsystem A is given by this right here. Now, the next step is to compute the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this matrix. So we can do that using NumPy. So let's assign WA to the eigenvalues and VA to the eigenvectors. And we can use this function to compute that on row A. And then to visualize this, we can use again, SymPy, this matrix function. And here we're just gonna look at the vector or the array that has the eigenvalues. So if we look at that, we can see here that the eigenvalues for this matrix are two over three and one over three. And if you recall, the eigenvalues of rho sub a are our Schmidt coefficients squared, right? So to get our Schmidt coefficients, we should take the square root of this. So we could just do here square root of wa. And here we see that the, the values we get here are the same that we had uh, above when we calculated the Schmidt coefficients using the singular value decomposition, right? So uh, here we see that by calculating the reduced density matrix of subsystem A, extracting its eigenvalues, we can extract the Schmidt coefficients by just getting the square root of those eigenvalues. And then if we look at the eigenvectors, these are going to be given in the form of, of a matrix where each of the columns are again the eigenvectors of that spectral decomposition, which are again state 0 and state 1, just like we had before. And then we just repeat this process, but for 
uh, subsystem B, which, you know, now we need to take the partial trace of row AB, but now over qubit 2, right? Because qubit 2 is our uh, subsystem A, and we're going to assign that to row sub B. So this is the reduced density matrix of that. And then if we perform the spectral decomposition to get the eigenvectors and eigenvalues, right? And then we display that the eigenvalues of that, what we see is that we get the exact same eigenvalues we got for subsystem A, but we get four of them because this is a larger system, but two of them are equal to zero, right? So if we take the square root of that, we're gonna get what we had before. So these are gonna be the Schmidt coefficients. And then the eigenvectors are going to be the equal superposition of zero, one, and one, zero. Now, this is the equal superposition of zero, one, minus one zero, but this vector is associated with this eigenvalue equal to zero. So that means this is not a Schmidt vector in our Schmidt decomposition. Then we get state zero zero, which is associated with this Schmidt coefficient. And then we get state one one, which is also associated with a value of zero. So that's not part of our decomposition. So that's it, that shows that we can also extract the components of our Schmidt decomposition by using this technique of calculating reduced density matrices and finding eigenvectors and eigenvalues. I hope this was helpful, but let me know if you have any questions.